Congratulations! You are about to learn the final piece of the puzzle that will enable you to compose great and intricate business rules. Up until now, I managed to construct some interesting use cases using only the functional mode of the function object. I was able to do so using a clever nesting of expressions. I managed to compact all the business logic into one expression object, and then I assigned this object as the top expression of the function. But sometimes it is not possible to achieve the desired goal using only one top expression, or it's just not worth the trouble. In many cases, we would prefer doing things in a regular sequential way, one expression or action at a time. For example, you might want to first calculate some result and then do a certain action based on that result, or even do another calculation to return a second result based on the first one. Enters the rule set object. The rule set object allows us to process the business rule in a sequential manner using steps. Each step is a rule object, just like was explained in the lecture about the loop expression. Unlike the loop expression, the rule set has a built-in variables management mechanism. This is especially important as variables help us to pass information from step to step. The variables that are defined in the rule set are automatically become part of the business rules context, so they can be used anywhere along the business rule. This seemingly simple feature is what allows for the creation of extremely complicated business rules. And from theory to practice, I want to incorporate into my resume check business rule the two actions I created in the last two lectures. To do so, I first need to go into an event mode. The event mode is what enables us to use the rule set object. After I entered into the event mode, the slot for the top expression disappeared and a new tab was introduced. I will enter the rule set tab to add a rule set to this function. Initially, there are no rule sets in the function. To add a new rule set, I will click on the create rule set button. The rule set object, like all objects, requires a name and long and short texts. The new rule set was added to the function. This rule set will act like a top expression, although it is not an expression per se. Notice the fact that I can add multiple rule sets. If there are more than one rule set, they will be activated in a sequential order as they are presented in this table. To step into the rule set maintenance screen, I will click on the rule set. The rule set maintenance screen appears. You should recognize the rules buttons from the loop expression. The rule set is currently empty. To add the first rule, I will click the insert rule button. Again, as rules are actually independent entities, we have the option to select an already existing rule but in most cases, it is preferable to create them from fresh. This way, the handling of the rule entity will be taken care of the rule set object. It will be as if the rule is part of the rule set and is not an independent object, which is very convenient. The first thing I want to do in this rule is to process the actual check. So I will first give a short description to this rule to indicate what it does. The rule is an if-then construct, but in this example, I want the check to be processed at all times. To achieve this effect, I will just leave the if statement blank. This way, the then part will always occur. 
In the then statement, I need to indicate that I want to activate the check expression. If to follow the most recent version of the resume check, it means that I need to process the decision tree I created. So I will choose this expression from the repository. The first rule is now complete. I will click OK to add it to the rule set. The rule was successfully added. Notice that BRF understands that the if part is redundant, and so it is not displayed. Also, notice the validity fields. If you want some rule to be valid in a specific window in time, you have the option of restricting its validity through these fields. But most of the time, I find myself not using this feature, so I like hiding those fields from sight. I do that using the Options menu and choosing Hide Rule Header. The rule looks fine, but something is not quite right. The result of the decision tree is the standard Boolean data element. If I to base further operations on this element, I'd better give it a proper name so there will be no doubt as to what is the purpose of this element. As I can't actually change the name of this standard element, I will create a new data element as the decision tree result. Wait a minute, what is this red message? It seems like I ruined the rule. What happened is that the result of the decision tree was no longer part of the context, so the result of this expression can't be saved anywhere. To fix this, I need to declare a variable. The declaration of variables is done in the rule set header. To expose the rule set header, you need to click on the show rule set header button. The variable can now be defined on the left. Great! The rule is valid again. The next thing I want to do right after the check is to perform the actions. For that, I will create a second rule as a separate step. To add a next in line rule, use the options menu. According to how I defined those actions in the last lectures, I want the sending mail action to be performed if the check was successful. Otherwise, I want to perform the message logging action.
To make things a bit more interesting, I will change the function so it will yield a text result. The text to be returned will be decided in the rule set. I will add a third rule. For the then part, I will use the assignment option. Very good, the rule set is now complete. To make sure I didn't forget any step, I can show only the headers of the rules using the gear symbol on the right, and then select hide all operations. The rule set looks complete. I will activate it. Notice that activating the rule set also activates the function. Both the rule set and the function objects were activated and the business rule is ready for action. The function can be tested as usual. If you want the actions to occur, don't forget to mark the execute actions checkbox. I will enter some values. Don't forget that the decision tree passes everyone who mentions a volunteering activity. The check has returned a positive answer. I can then go and check whether any log messages or emails were created in the system. The way I do that was already presented in the last two lectures, so there is no point in repeating this process in this lecture. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. You have seen all the golden guidelines and tips to become BRF Plus professionals. To complete your training, you will have to practice on a functioning SAP system. If you do not have an access to such a system, you can log in to a test SAP system on the cloud. To get more information on the subject, search Google for how to create an SAP developer edition in the cloud. The remaining lectures of this course will focus on more technical features of BRF+. Those features are important to any professional that interested in separating himself from the rest. Those lecture space will be quicker and they will focus on very specific BRF+ functionalities. After watching them, you will learn important technical facts that will help you set yourself as a true professional.